Greetings and warm wishes to all for our friends and colleagues here in Kansas, our friends and colleagues in the Republic of Kosovo, across the nation and around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Audrey Coleman. I'm the newly installed director at the Dole Institute of Politics here at the University of Kansas. And I'm honored to host our virtual program today, The Modern History of Kosovo, Past, Present, and Future. For those of you who might not be familiar with the mission of the Dole Institute, we promote bipartisanship, civil discourse, public service, and civic engagement. Inspired by the leadership legacies of U.S. Senator from Kansas, Bob Dole, and his wife, U.S. Senator from North Carolina, Senator Elizabeth Dole. Today's program is intimately connected with the legacy of U.S. Senator Bob Dole and his mission to promote democracy in Eastern Europe, and more specifically, a free and independent Republic of Kosovo. Today's program is presented in partnership with the Kosovo American Education Fund and the American Councils for International Education. We're funded in part by the Jim Jama Opportunity Fund here at the Dole Institute and his generous gift. Our local co-sponsors here at KU are the Center for Russian, East European and Eurasian Studies, the European Studies Department and the Center for International and Global Studies. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to share with you a recorded message from Mr. Jim Jama himself. Mark, would you please give us Mr. Jama's message? Thanks. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, all distinguished guests and members of our government. I'm Jim Jama. I met Senator Dole in 1987 when he was majority leader of the U.S. Senate. Since then, long time ago until now, we have remained close friends and Senator Dole continues to work hard on behalf of our young country. As you all know, Senator Dole and I have worked very hard in supporting our cause together. On August 30, 1990, Senator Dole, leader of the U.S. Senate, along with six other senators, came to Pristina on a fact-finding mission to meet with Dr. Rugova and his team. Senator Dole's team witnessed firsthand the brutality that Serbian forces imposed on people of Kosovo under martial law. 1990, few people had heard of Kosovo, and Milosevic insisted that this issue was internal affair of Serbia. The tension of the world then was on other Yugoslavian republics, and even Bush administration was hesitant to touch the issue. By traveling to Pristina three years ago to talk directly to Rogova and his team, Sato Dole and his colleagues make Kosovo instantly and an international topic. Three years ago when I met Senator Dole in person, then majority leader of the Senate, I told the Senator, I am Albanian and I grew up in a farm just like he did on the plains of Kansas. We both recognized then we had similar upbringing and the same principles and traditions. Senator and I have remained since then very close, connected, and very good friends. You all know from the time of our first meeting, Senator Lou has worked very hard in behalf of Albanian people, especially the people of Kosovo. Senator Lou was key initiating the red line policy with President Bush and the famous Christmas warning. Senator Dole was the head leader of the U.S. team, including Senator John McCain, Joe Lieberman, Aldermano, to convince President Clinton to use military force to stop genocide in Kosovo and to go to war with Serbia. As you all know, this directly led to liberation of Kosovo 
in the creation of our country. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart, especially the leaders that initiated this good work and made possible this deserved recognition of Senator Dole for all the work he has done for Albanian people and our young country, Kosovo. I hope and pray that we all continue to work very hard together to further develop our true democratic system, which will fairly represent all the people of Kosovo. Thank you very much all. I wish you all the best. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye, Dieter Emir. We invite you all to be a part of our conversation today. After the presentations, we'll have an open Q&A session. For our virtual audience, we'd like you to submit your questions to dolequestions at ku.edu. That's D-O-L-E questions, just one word, at ku.edu. Please remember that the Dole Institute promotes civil discourse and is dedicated to, to providing a forum around which we discuss difficult topics and make constructive conversation. So please phrase your questions with those values in mind. And now I'm so pleased to hand the mic, pass it over, uh, the virtual platform over to my colleague, Mr. Jenny Shaporta. Jenny is uh, the country representative for Kosovo for the American Councils of International Education. He's a graduate of Rochester Institute of Technology in Kosovo with over 10 years of experience in management of educational programs, including higher education, development, and philanthropic initiatives. He's also a member of the Board of Governors of the American Chamber of Commerce in Kosovo. Jenny, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Audrey. Dear Audrey, representative of the Dole Institute and valuable audience members. On behalf of American Councils and the Kosovo American Education Fund, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present the modern history of Kosovo. On a personal note, I want to thank Senator Dole for being the voice of people of Kosovo when we did not have one and a champion of our freedom when we did not know if there would be a tomorrow. I would like to extend the acknowledgement to Mr. Jim Ziamatou. The support of Albanian American diaspora leaders has been and continues to be of critical importance as we build a new democracy in Europe. This presentation is a testament to and represents the new Kosovo, as you will shortly hear from our distinguished alumni, Pleorat and Zana, who represent a new generation of leaders that have brought their US education home and are making a difference in Kosovo's development. Pleorat is an entrepreneur and CEO of Novus Consulting, a pioneer firm in providing IT solutions and the founder of LionNet, one of the leading online media outlets with Albanian speaking audience. Novus is a trusted company that tackles some of the most challenging and complex tasks in software development and cybersecurity. A graduate of Columbia University through the KF program, Haidili is currently expanding Novus in Germany, Switzerland, and the African continent. Zana served as the first ambassador of Kosovo to Panama and seven other countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. She served as an advisor to the foreign minister of Kosovo contributing to the formation of Kosovo's foreign policy goals and institutional efforts to strengthen its standing in the world. A graduate of Harvard Kennedy School through the KF program, Rudy is a devoted senior career foreign service officer with a passion for public service. Before I pass the word to Zana, I would want to briefly talk about our work at American Councils and especially the KF program, which has been building a cater of the most sought after professionals in Kosovo for over 17 years. American Councils for International Education, KF's parent organization, is an international nonprofit based in DC, and it's focused on exchanges, professional training, and critical language. Among some of the specialties of the organization are some of the points that I've listed there. In Kosovo, the organization had opened its offices in 2004 with the establishment of the Kosovo American Education Fund, and later on expanded by offering the program such as the Kennedy Luger Youth Exchange and Study, and recently assisting the U.S. Embassy in Kosovo with the establishment of the United States Kosovo Educational Exchange Board 
and recruitment of the Fulbright programs, among others. American consuls were closely with the U.S. Embassy, USAID, public and private sectors in Kosovo, and the Ministry of Education of Kosovo. Next slide, please. Focusing on the Kosovo American Education Fund, it's a graduate fellowship program that is being offered to the talented Kosovars for advanced degrees in the US. It's established with initial funding from AID in 2004 and has operated as an independent entity uh, since then. Today, KF is supported largely through the charitable support of private sector in Kosovo, but also individuals of goodwill in Kosovo, the US, and also the American universities in big part. Kel Fellows demonstrate a strong commitment to the economic development of Kosovo. Next slide, please. A recent impact evaluation uh, done for the KF program showed some of the numbers that we've presented here. So within 111 scholarships that the program has provided, we have 103 alumni and their employment rate is at 100%. 40 plus universities have hosted our fellows, including Columbia, Duke, Harvard, University of San Francisco, Vanderbilt University, among others. 80% of our alumni work in Kosovo and 85% have been indicated that their leadership, leadership skills have advanced since their return. This is also a testament to the employment opportunities that they create and policies that they draw forward through their education that they've gained in the US. Next slide, please. Throughout the presentation of Pilato and Zona, you'll see some of the key figures that have been instrumental in the freedom of Kosovo. KF alumni here are pictured in Pristina and one of the fundraisers for the program with Ambassador Christopher Hill, who was the US special envoy in 1999. Next slide, please. And similarly here, KF alumni are pictured with General Wesley Clark, who was the NATO Supreme Allied Commander during the NATO intervention in the Coast World War. This is the perfect time to pass the word on to Zana because we see both Zana and Pleurat in this picture with General Clark. So again, Zana and Pleurat, thank you. Uh, please take it away. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Audrey, uh, and everybody involved. Good evening from Kosovo. I am Zana Zachiri Rudi, and I'm speaking to you today as a diplomat, as a public servant, a Kosovar, and a former, and together with Pleurat, we are former Midwesterners having gone to school just two hours, hours north of where you are right now. Pleurat and I have had the privilege of studying in some of the best schools in the United States and have had financial support by distinguished individuals like Jim Jema and institutions like Kosovo American Education Fund. We are very thankful. I hope that this presentation will help you feel closer to Kosovo, to my country. I hope you will be proud of the US involvement and intervention that liberated a people from repression. And I also hope to inspire you to look into careers in the public service. Let's hope the world never needs it. But if it ever does, let's hope that we'll have more people like Robert Dole that will stand in the right side of history. I can speak for my friend here as well when I say that we are thankful for the opportunity to exhibit a brief history of Kosovo and the success story it has become, thanks to the attention and support from Kosovo's staunchest supporters like Jim Jema and Senator Robert Dole, whose name this institution proudly holds. Thank you, and in Albanian, Falimin Dere. July 22nd, if we can go to the next slide. July 22nd is Senator Robert Dole's birthday. And it is on this day last year that Kosovo wanted to honor his contribution to our cause in the most difficult time for us in the early 90s. On his birthday, Kosovo decided on the launching of the project to construct his statue in front of the hotel where he stayed three decades ago. Today marks a little over three decades since the historic visit of the US Senator Robert Dole to Kosovo, one of the greatest friends of Albanians and Kosovo in particular. Senator Dole's visit in the 1990s 
ushered a new level of attention toward Kosovo, for which we will be forever grateful. The visit was made possible thanks to patriots such as Jim Jema, Harry Bayraktari, and many of their friends, to whom we are equally thankful. We would not be here if it were not for them. Today, we are happy to speak here and represent the Republic of Kosovo, a young democratic country based on internationally accepted values and principles. Kosovo today is a prosperous state. It's a multi-ethnic and peace-loving country with a growing economy. Kosovo has worked to strengthen its democratic institutions and has employed standards and integration of all its communities. Our constitution is modeled after the best international standards for human rights and freedoms. It cherishes, cares for, and protects all of its communities. It is home to all of its communities. Thank you. Florat, would you please continue? Thank you, Zana. Um, hi, everybody. So we have prepared a timeline of main events in Kosovo's modern history. The timeline will help you as an audience navigate the most salient historical events starting mainly from 1912 following the Balkan Wars when the Ottoman Empire withdrew from the Balkan territories. Um, following the withdrawal of the Ottoman Empire from the Balkans in the early 20th century, Albania declared independence in 1912 with borders defined by the great powers of the time. As a result, many regions inhabited by Albanians remained outside the borders of modern Albania. Perhaps about 50% of Albanians remained outside of Albania's borders, including the majority in Kosovo, Serbia, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Greece. Up until World War II, Kosovo remained under the reign of the Kingdom of the Serbs, Croats, and the Slovenes, what later became uh, Yugoslavia. During this period, Serbia maliciously attempted to change the dem demographic composition of Kosovo by settling thousands of Serbs and Montenegrin colonizers to Kosovo and expelling in an organized effort about 250,000 Albanians to Turkey. During World War II, Kosovo was occupied by Italy and Germany and following the victory of the allied forces, Kosovo remained under the rule of Yugoslavia as a province with limited rights. Now, moving to the period where during uh, Kosovo was during uh, the period of Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia was ruled by Josip Broz Tito, the communist leader of Yugoslavia, from World War II up, up until his death in 1980. By World War II, the illiteracy rate among Kosovo Albanian population was very high, and the administrative and education system was dominated by the Serb minority in Kosovo. The rights, or the lack thereof, of Kosovo Albanians, who constituted the majority of Kosovo's population, about 80%, changed depending on the relationship that Yugoslavia had with Albania, the neighboring uh, country. During the 1950s, when Albania broke its relations with the Soviet Union, tensions between Yugoslavia and Albania started to rise. As a result, Kosovo Albanians were being persecuted during the 50s and the 60s because many dissidents of the regime were suspected to be collaborators of Albania's secret service trying to break Kosovo away from Yugoslavia. Thousands were arrested, beaten up, uh, and killed during this period. During the late 1960s, when Yugoslavia also broke away from the Soviet bloc, um, Albania became an ally of Yugoslavia, and as friendly relations between the two countries benefited Kosovo Albanians. As a result, Yugoslavia sought the support of Albania in developing the education system in Kosovo, where Albania supported Kosovo with providing literature and uh, teachers and university professors. During the 1950s and during the 1960s, compared to the other regions of Yugoslavia, there were limited investments in Kosovo. 
Unemployment remained high and the employment within the administration was dominated by the Serb and Montenegrin minority. Due to their overall dissatisfaction with their economic and living conditions, Kosovo Albanians waged a series of protests during the 1950s and the 1960s, including the massive 1968 protest. Although these protests were driven by the lack of economic conditions, they had a nationalist sentiment too, because Albanians believed that they were being discriminated against because of their ethnic uh, background. Following the protests of Kosovo Albanians in 1968, the Yugoslav Communist Party held a conference in Croatia where it decided to replace Serb nationalists from its leadership positions and decided to grant Kosovo additional self-governing rights. In the meantime, the University of Pristina was established in 1970, offering degrees in Albanian language with the support of um, literature supplies and teachers from Albania. Then, finally, in 1974, Yugoslavia granted Kosovo full autonomy with almost the same, same self-governance governing rights as Yugoslavia's six constitu constituent republics. The Serbs used to dominate and rule Kosovo during that time. However, with the emancipation of the Albanians and their empowerment after the adoption of the Kosovo's 1974 constitution, the Serb minority in Kosovo started to complain about being discriminated against by the Albanians. Even though a minority back then, even though they comprised 21% of the population, they controlled 52% of all leadership and managerial positions in Kosovo's institutions. institutions. In the meantime, Yugoslavia never managed to create a national identity. As a result, the ethnic rifts following the death in 1980 of Tito started to emerge. In 1987, tensions mounted in Kosovo as nationalist Serbs complained to Serbia about their apparent discrimination by the Kosovo Albanians. Slobodan Milosevic, here in this picture, uh, then the head of Serbia's Communist Party was sent by Yugoslavia's president to ease the tensions in Kosovo. Instead, Milosevic used this opportunity to instigate in the background clashes between Serb nationalists and the Kosovo police. He staged, he staged a speech in front of a crowd of Serbs, angry Serbs, in the outskirts of the capital Pristina. He shouted at the crowd of Serbs, nationalists, saying, no one can touch you. This event made Milosevic famous and powerful among Serb nationalists and paved the way for the breakup of Yugoslavia. Then in 1989, Milosevic ended uh, Kosovo's self-governance uh, or autonomous status that was granted by the 1974 constitution. I was a kid back then and I remember um, we had one TV, we didn't have iPads, iPhones or you know, multiple TVs. So um, every evening I was uh, hanging out with my dad and I remember as of today when I was uh, seven that the news would never stop because the news were covering the, the event that um, the constitution of 1974 was abolished by Milosevic and this had a big impact on, on our lives since then. Um, so Milosevic enacted numerous repressive measures in the meantime against Kosovo that put ten thousands, tens of thousands of Albanians out of work, shut down the education system in Albanian language, and outlawed the use of the Albanian language and symbols. Personally, I remember this period, even though I was a kid, because of, the, because of the struggles that my family had to go through during the 1990s. My dad was laid off from work. He was a lawyer with the National Postal Service. And my four older brothers had to migrate to Germany to avoid military draft. If they would have stayed in Kosovo, they would be sent to fight in Croatia and Bosnia. So going back to the events of the time, 
The Kosovo Albanian leadership organized protests against the repressive policies of Belgrade. All the protests were crushed by the police, again leaving many dead, injured, and arrested. Considering that Serbia took control of the police forces in Kosovo, had a powerful army, and that the focus of the international community was on the wars in Croatia and Bosnia, the Albanian leadership organized peaceful resistance, a peaceful resistance movement against Milosevic's regime. The movement was led by the pacifist leader Ibrahim Lugova, here, right uh, in this picture. Now I'll give the floor to Zana. Thank you, Devrat. Um, the day Senator Dole visited Kosovo that August of 1990, some 10,000 Kosovar Albanians showed up in front of his hotel to demonstrate our cause and draw and hope to draw attention to our plight, the Serbian oppression. The uprising was quelled, quelled by the Serb police using tear gas and water cannons. In his remarks, Senator Bob Dole stood up for, for us, rightly confirming that it was the Serb state apparatus that suppressed the protesters to the Serbs who were denying their actions during the protests, he boldly said. People want freedom. People want human rights. They have a right to demonstrate. They have a right to express their views and they have a right to hold up two fingers. I'd like, we have footage of that visit and I'd like um, to show you uh, part of that, uh, of the vi visit. So if we can have the video playing now. It's a great honor for me to be here with my colleagues and particularly Senator Dole, who is a champion of freedom and human rights. I bring you greetings and regards and prayers and wishes from the Albanian community in New York, particularly Jim Jama, who is working so hard to, to try to sensitize people to what is taking place. We're here to learn, uh, we believe, strong in democracy, as does our government. We believe in individual rights, as does our government. And we're, we're opposed to human rights abuses. We used to hear in the Soviet Union, and it's a new world out there. Maybe you haven't heard about it. People want freedom. Please, a little bit slower. People want freedom. People want human rights. They have a right to demonstrate. They have a right to express their views. They have a right to hold up their fingers. They have a right to hold up their fingers. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with That would be a very bad uh, thing to happen. It would, not be, uh, it would not be well received in the United States. And finally, uh, we want to thank you for your assistance and, and tell you whether people like it or not, uh, freedom is coming, democracy is coming, human rights are coming. You may as well get ready. You may as well get ready for it. It's, it'll come. It's not this year, next year. We are ready. Thank you. His visit and his remarks mark the beginning of the internationalizing of the Kosovo cause, which a decade later led to our freedom and paved our way for independence. I was seven years old at the time, and I remember the way my parents watched the news that evening. They couldn't sit. They watched the news standing. I was not at an age to understand a lot, but I knew things were bad, and I knew that there was hope. As a mom of a seven-year-old today, I'm happy that the legacy of Senator Bob Dole and the U.S. presidents and secretaries of state Many of Kosovo's friends like Elliot Engel, General Wesley Clark, Ambassador Christopher Hill, Ambassador William Walker, Ambassador John Menzies, and many more have worked together 
with the Albanians and the Serbs to make sure history doesn't repeat. My daughter is growing up like any other seven-year-old. She's funny, a little defiant, smart. We're thankful, though, that she and her Albanian friends will grow up not having to deal with issues that we had to deal with. As a diplomat of a free Kosovo, I admire, I admire Senator Dole for his negotiating skills. His judgment and high integrity earned him the respect of all involved. Senator Dole said, we're here to support democracy and freedom for individuals everywhere in Serbia, Kosovo, Croatia, everywhere. What an inclusive leader. He communicated his country's stance clearly at the same time using all the means at his disposal. To talk about Kosovo and how everything changed for the better, we see that everything starts and has Senator Dole at the center. After his visit to Kosovo in 1990, he then was useful in the Rambouillet talks. Um, and he was then enlisted by the then Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, to help reach a settlement between the Kosovo and the Serbian side, and in this way, end the fighting in Kosovo. He would speak to our representatives as someone who knows as someone who cares about our situation and our future. Senator Dole is our hero. He is a loyal supporter to us and a friend of Kosovo, a people in need. Every child in Kosovo will grow up to honor Senator Dole's contribution, having been one of the very first American politicians to bring the US's and the world's attention to our cause, which ultimately led to our freedom and independence. His famous saying ingrained in all our memories, freedom is coming, democracy is coming, turn out to not have been just a prediction or a promise. He became key catalyst for a global international humanitarian mobilization to end tyranny against the people, the Albanian people. To Senator Dole today, I'd say, you believed in us when nobody else did. Today we are free and we are democratic. We are able and willing to join the US supporting peacekeeping and democratization efforts worldwide, just like we needed decades ago. Thank you. If you can move to the next slide. Please. This is how uh, his visit was covered in the New York Times. And this is where it mentions the protests and how he stood up for uh, what was the truth at the time. Next slide, please. And then Senator Dole looks like he follows the developments in Kosovo with great interest. And Kosovo will be forever grateful. He once worked to internationalize the Kosovo cause against repression. And now he stands beside us as an independent state. I will always stand beside you. You should be very proud of all you have accomplished since then, said then Senator Dole on his Twitter account. And these words mean a lot to Kosovo. And also, we know he tweeted yesterday about this event too. So I'm glad you're listening in. Um, we're very thankful to have a friend like Senator Bob Dole and wish him very well. Florad, please continue from now on. Thank you, Zana. Now we will go back to the events of the 1990s that uh, shaped um, uh, shaped uh, the, the breakup and, and the countries that came out of Yugoslavia. As Yugoslavia's constituent republics started to break away from Yugoslavia, wars uh, in, in these countries and republics broke out. Initially, the Yugoslav army controlled by Belgrade, mainly Serbs, um, and the local Serbs started the war of Croatia in 1991. Then the Yugoslav army um, attacked Slovenia following their declaration of independence. The war in Bosnia started also in 1991 that was fought between the Bosnians, Croats, and the Serbs, uh, supported by Belgrade and Milosevic, that left thousands killed and millions displaced. On the picture on the right, 
uh, you will see the graveyard of the massacre of Srebrenica, where more than 8,000 Bosnian civilians were, were executed by uh, the Serbs. This was the worst single massacre on, European, on the European continent since uh, World War II. Um, then, following all these atrocities in Bosnia and Croatia, the international community got serious and uh, got involved in um, finding a final solution and bringing peace to Bosnia and Croatia. The war in Bosnia ended in 1995, uh, following threats made by the international community towards Slobodan Milosevic. And the Dayton Peace Agreement ended the war in Bosnia. Here is the signature of, of the agreement uh, between Serbia, Bosnia, and Croatia. Yet the issue of Kosovo uh, was not addressed back then. As a result, um, in Kosovo, there were talks and callings to um, start a more active resistance. Uh, since the peaceful resistance of Ibrahim Rogova was not yielding any results, and the international community failed to address uh, the Kosovo issue at Dayton, um, back then, um, Albanian dissidents and student leaders um, called for uh, an active resistance against Milosevic's regime. Initially, the active resistance met, meant nudging the regime with protests and actions of defiance. As a result, in 1997, the students of the University of Pristina organized a massive prote protest in uh, Pristina. Then, in late 1997, the Kosovo Liberation Army emerged as a guerrilla force demanding and started to fight for the liberation of uh, Kosovo. Following the public emergence of uh, KLA in early 1998, war broke out in several rural areas of Kosovo. During their raids on the Albanian villages, the Serb police and military forces commit, committed many atrocities by killing civilians, including children, women, and elderly, raping women, displacing thousands of families, as well as looting and setting for houses on fire. By mid-1998, the international community had started to get involved with Kosovo's conflict by attempting to put pressure on Belgrade to refrain from using disproportional force and stop the atrocities against the civilians. As a result, in 1999, leaders of Belgrade and Pristina were invited by the international community, here in this picture, um, in Rambouillet, France, to negotiate a solution on Kosovo and to stop the war. In the meantime, Belgrade had accepted the deployment uh, in Kosovo of the Kosovo Verification Mission, led by a US diplomat, William Walker, whose role was to monitor a ceasefire during the ongoing negotiations in Rambouillet. The Rambouillet negotiations produced an agreement that would end the war in Kosovo um, and would grant Kosovo autonomous status with international guarantees. The Kosovo negotiating team, led by KLA leader Hashim Thaci and the pacifist leader Ibrahim Rogova, signed the deal. However, Milosevic rejected the agreement, while in Kosovo, his military, military troops committed the Rachak, the famous Rachak massacre in uh, February of 1999. The patience of the international community, um, especially that of the United States, ran out following Milosevic's rejection of the Rambouillet agreement and the Rachak massacre of uh, February 1999. As a result, um, on March 24th, 1999, NATO started airstrikes against Serbia, Serbia's military and police targets in Kosovo and throughout Serbia. In the meantime, the 
during the NATO bombing, um, the Serb police, military, and paramilitary forces continued their attacks against Kosovo Albanians at large scale. Several battles were fought with the KLA in Drenica, Dugagini, Lab regions, and along the border between Albania and Kosovo. Milosevic's forces continued to even more aggressively uh, wage their military campaign against the KLA and civilians as well. Until the end of the airstrikes in June 1999, according to the UN Refugee Agency, more than 1 million Kosovo Albanians, that's roughly about 50% of uh, Kosovo's population, were expelled to neighboring Macedonia, Albania, and Montenegro. Thousands of civilians were killed in massacres throughout Kosovo, and since, since then, up to date, more than 1,600 people are still missing uh, in Kosovo. Following the following a campaign of more than three months of airstrikes by NATO, uh, Milosevic agreed to withdraw all of its armed forces from Kosovo. On June 10, NATO deployed to Kosovo its ground troops, whose mission was to ensure peace in Kosovo and the free return of refugees to their homes. In this picture, you see the US troops being cheered as liberators by the Kosovo Albanians upon their arrival in the city of uh, Jilan in, uh, in the east of Kosovo. Now, as of June 1999, Kosovo was put under UN administration. Uh, the UN mission in Kosovo, or UNMIC, how, how we called it, was set up to govern Kosovo in the meantime and establish Kosovo's governing institutions. In the meantime, during 1999 and 2000, thousands of refugees returned to their destroyed homes, started rebuilding their lives following the vast destruction of the war. In 2000, Kosovo held its first democratic elections for local governments, government municipalities. And in 2001, the first parliamentary elections were held when Kosovo elected its first government and president and started to um, establish its own gover governing uh, institutions. Even though Kosovo was liberated from uh, Milosevic's regime, our future status was still uncertain. Uh, we were a, a country or, or a territory run by the UN. Uh, Serbia continued to claim that Kosovo is part of Serbia. Um, and this situation made the Kosovo Albanian majority a little bit anxious. As a result of such tensions, in March of 2004, uh, clashes broke out between Albanians and Serbs in several areas of Kosovo following an incident in the divided town of Mitrovica. Um, NATO forces intervened to calm the situation, and the events of 2004 were considered a wake-up call for the international community to adopt um, a, an exit strategy from Kosovo and solve its final status. As a result, in 2005, the international community assigned um, a special envoy, the former Finnish Prime Minister Matija Tisari, to mediate uh, negotiations between Kosovo and Serbia on the final, final status and propose a final settlement. The first direct talks between Kosovo and Serb leaders on the future status of Kosovo were held in Vienna. However, following a series of discussions, no agreement could be reached reach with Belgrade on Kosovo's final status. As a result, in uh, April 2007, the UN Special Envoy, here in this picture, proposed a plan for Kosovo's final status, recommending Kosovo to, be, to become an independent state with strong conditions for the protection of non-Albanian uh, communities. In this picture, you see former Prime Minister of Finland, Marti Atisari, receiving the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in bringing peace to Kosovo and other regions throughout the world uh, during his career. 
following the proposal of uh, Mr. Atisari, then on February 17th, 2008, the Kosovo democratically elected representatives um, in the Kosovo Assembly declared Kosovo as an independent uh, country. Sana? Thank you, Pleorat. I'm so happy to get into this part of, pre of the presentation where we talk about cheerful things, when we talk about how Kosovo's democratically elected representatives convened a special an extraordinary meeting of the Kosovo Assembly on February 17 of 2008 to declare Kosovo an independent and sovereign state. What a feeling. How lucky were we to be part of, of a celebration of the Declaration of Independence, but also what a responsibility for Kosovo leaders to build a democratic multi-ethnic republic guided by the principles of non-discrimination and equal protection under the law. A responsibility that Kosovo institutions and people took with pride and gratitude. As stated in the Declaration of Independence, the independence of Kosovo reflects the will of our people. And it is in full accordance with the recommendations of the UN Special Envoy, Artisari, and his comprehensive proposal for the Kosovo status settlement. The Declaration of Independence came as an answer to the call of its people, a commitment to confront the painful legacy of the recent history as Pleurat very well represent, uh, presented in a spirit of reconciliation and forgiveness and dedicating the, and the dedication to protect, promote and honor the diversity among other things. Another important element is the fact that our independence concludes the agonizing process of dissolution of Yugoslavia. And as such, we are committed to peace and stability in Kosovo, as well as peace and stability in our region. We work with our neighbors towards reconciliation and good neighborly relations, and together move toward a European future. Kosovo's communities today enjoy political rights, rights that have to do with identity, culture, language. Communities enjoy privileges such as reserved parliamentary seats, supportive and special treatment as a way forward toward reconciliation. Go next slide, please. The, the days, months and years following the independence of Kosovo were the days, months, and years where we worked the hardest. The independence was recognized, quickly recognized by the United States and a lot of countries reaching the number 217. A new constitutional transfer of powers uh, to the government of Kosovo took place after nine years of United Nations administration. Serbia, the neighboring country with whom we negotiated the final status settlement and um, claims that the Kosovo state and the Declaration of Independence is illegal. In 2009, Kosovo's multi-ethnic security force launched under the NATO supervision. Please, the next slide. So following the Declaration of Independence, Serbia took the issue to the International Court of Justice for an advisory opinion asking the question, is the unilateral declaration of independence by the provisional institutions of self-government government of Kosovo in accordance with international law? The World Court unambiguously advised that the declaration of independence of Kosovo adopted on 17th February, 2008, did not violate general international law. In this way, the World Court confirmed that the Declaration of Independence of Kosovo violated no applicable rule of international law. This confirmation indeed confirmed the position of Kosovo. It is a unique and unprecedented case. And it is unique in the sense that it did not cause any chain effect. The General Assembly rejected in 2010, which is right after the opinion was issued, 
It rejected a Serbian draft resolution that called for a mutually acceptable solution for all outstanding issues. This ended the possibility for re reopening a dialogue on the status of Kosovo, sovereignty, or territorial, territorial integrity of Kosovo. The General Assembly confirmed the ICJ's legal finding and established the fact that Kosovo is a state. A similar request by Serbia advanced before the ICJ was also refused in its entirety, recalling years of internationally sponsored negotiations and the absence of any requirement in the Security Council resolution for a negotiated agreement on status. The three main UN bodies, the Security Council, the International Court of Justice, the General Assembly were sure to reject any possibility for renegotiating the status, renegotiating the status and territorial integrity of the Republic of Kosovo. From this, we see that Kosovo's next slide, please, Bella. We see that Serbia's move was political. With respect to foreign policy, though, the opinion explicitly determined that there's no longer there's no reason for states to further postpone their recognition of the independence of Kosovo. And nothing in the opinion supports a call for further status talks. Kosovo is a unique case in that sense. In the, dial in the With respect to dialogue of Serbia, like Pleurat said, we did go through dialogue, a dialogue phase with Serbia from 2005 to 2007 which was the international process to determine Kosovo's final status. Once the dialogue to determine the final status of Kosovo led to independence, and with the intention, to, the intention of normalizing the relations with our neighbors, Serbia, in 2011, Kosovo engaged in a series of uh, European Union brokered negotiations with Serbia, but now as equals. The idea was to work toward normalization of relations between the two countries and eventually lead to mutual recognition. A number of agreements were reached on civil registries, freedom of movement, custom stamps, diplomas, integrated border management, energy, judiciary, telecoms, and many others. But these agreements regulate technical and political interstate affairs. This dialogue is not about Kosovo's status. Kosovo's constructive engagement in the dialogue with Serbia is a testimony of its commitment to international rules and responsibility and further demonstrates Kosovo's capabilities as an independent and sovereign state. Our neighbor, Serbia, does not honor the agreements and works against what is stipulated in the agreements. Serbia continues to lead a campaign to withdraw Kosovo's recognitions and prevents Kosovo from joining international organizations. Internationally, it continues to confuse the international community, claiming the talks of the dialogue, in, claiming the talks of the dialogue as if it's the status of Kosovo yet to be determined. It is also important to talk about uh, another milestone of Kosovo during this presentation, which is the supervised independence. The process that determined Kosovo's final status was mediated by the UN Special Envoy, Marti Atisari. At the end of the negotiation process, ahead of independence, Atisari proposed that the independence of Kosovo be supervised for initial period of the by the international community. The UN Secretary General fully endorsed this proposal. Then in 2012, the International Steering Group overseeing Kosovo since the Declaration of Independence ended its role over the government of Kosovo. At this point in time, Kosovo ended its supervised independence. Kosovo people and its leaders recognized their responsibilities as a new independent state. Kosovo is a success story. Today, Kosovo maintains internal stability as well as Continue, contributing to a more peaceful and stable region. With its far reaching protections as stipulated in our constitution, Kosovo is home to all its communities. Separate provisions uh, are also included for communities, including special political rights, um, um, also special treatment when it comes to the response um, that uh, will 
further leads to reintegration, equality, and reconciliation. The democratically elected government of Kosovo is stable and enjoys wide public support. Kosovo's government is citizen-centered. We have built modern, incredible security and legal structures, as well as law enforcement agencies. We have an, a very active and independent civil society. Kosovo's economy is small, but growing. We are a use, Euro user. Kosovo is blessed with a young, skilled, multilingual youth and labor force with a strong entrepreneurial spirit. Much like the rest of the world, however, COVID has presented disruptions to our growth. We have measures in place to help the business community to overcome these challenges. Kosovo has all the attributes of a modern state. It is a democracy, has a young, innovative, diverse population, has a defined territory and diplomatic capacity and willingness to interact with other states through bilateral relations as well as multilateral ones with a commitment to peace and security. It has become a credible and responsible partner of the United States and all our allies. Kosovo also in the time of Yugoslavia was, um, had, um, had attributes of a state that we enjoy today. It was also one of the seven units um, that was, were created after this dissolution of Yugoslavia. Kosovo in the international arena today as the newest European, uh, as the newest state in the European continent, it, it aspires to become a full member of the international community. We are committed to establishing diplomatic relations with each member state of the United Nations. We already secured the recognition of 117 states. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora works tirelessly to strengthen the bonds of friendship and cooperation with all the member states. We have also created, accredited a good number of diplomatic and consular missions. We are proud to be presented in and cover a wide geographic scope. The world will continue to hear our success story. We have signed over 100, we have signed hundreds of agreements with states and institutions, and we are happy that we participate in all regional and most international organizations. We have a special relationship with the United States. As you have probably noticed throughout the presentation, everything starts and continues with the United States. We um, have worked together with the United States towards our independence. And today, the United States supports us in all of our efforts as a state, as a sovereign and independent state, with the normalization of Kosovo and Serbia's relations, with strengthening the rule of law, fostering economic growth, energy security, justice promotion, um, and also through the difficult times that COVID-19 presented, we have been very uh, thankful to have received um, a, a lot of support, financial support from the United States in, uh, for COVID relief that in just 2020 reached to 2.7 million. But we also have other projects that the United States supports uh, our efforts through the USAID, the NATO-led um, K4 Kosovo Force, and is the where the United States is the larger, largest troop contributor. Um, Kosovo today, so we are very happy to have also hosted a number of US presidents, vice presidents, you see in the picture that we just, if you could go back to that one slide. This is when uh, the then Vice President Biden visited Kosovo. We have uh, been honored that his um, late son, Bo, served also in Kosovo. And we have a monument that we that uh, all of our leaders um, honor every year and where Vice President then and now President Biden has visited. We have been uh, fortunate to have had the US support and attention and um, um, in all phases of our statehood, leading up to our independence and also continuing today. We, we wanted to include a few pictures of things that we thought you might find interesting to learn about Kosovo. 
the mother of Saint and Mother Teresa of Calcutta was born in Kosovo. And today in the capital, uh, Pristina, we have a cathedral named after her. And we uh, are very proud to share with the world the mother of solidarity, the person that best represents the Albanian character. And I hope that you um, find it interesting and um, uh, as we do to um, uh, see, to recall Mother Teresa's actions in the world. Uh, next slide, please. We are also only two years after having been, uh, be having uh, become a member to the International Olympics Committee, we won our first gold medal in Rio of Brazil. We, in judo. Then in um, this year's um, Olympic Games, we went on to receive two more um, uh, medals. And so we are young country of just 13 years uh, have, um, has made its mark in the world. And um, we are very proud to have uh, our best ambassadors, as you can see in this slide as well, we um, have given the world a lot of uh, talent and we are very proud when we mention singers and artists like Rita Ora and Dua Lipa. And I hope you find it um, interesting that they are very famous and they are doing very well in the world, but they are continuously working also to put Kosovo on the map and to put Kosovo name out there. So we uh, consider them our ambassadors and we're very, very proud of them. Um, next time you listen to a song by either of them and many more in the world stage right now, uh, think of Kosovo. Today, if you're wondering how Kosovo is doing today in pictures, we are very proud that we are wine producers. We are returning, um, we have, after the independence, we have returned to our 2000 old tradition of wine uh, producing and uh, we're hoping to uh, export it more and more to the world. We have built some of the most modern infrastructure when it comes to highways, and we're hoping that this will connect Kosovo further and um, help us um, leverage our geographic position uh, of being at the center of the Western Balkans. Um, next slide, please. After uh, I mentioned a few things about the European Union, I'd like you to think to uh, watch this video of um, of a uh, of part of a branding campaign that we had right after the war, the independence. But we'd like to just talk. I'd like to just mention briefly that Kosovo um, Kosovo's main foreign policy goal is a me is membership to the European Union and Euro Atlantic structures. Kosovo has signed a stabilization and association agreement with the European Union, which brought us closer, and which uh, is a historic milestone as it paves the way for full membership into the European Union in the future. We are now in contractual relations with the European Union. Five EU member states that did not recognize Kosovo yet have approved the agreement nonetheless. The European Union is present in Kosovo through a, the Office of the Special Representative in our capital. We have a rule of law mission of the European Union. And the U European Union is the largest donor uh, providing assistance to Kosovo and the region having received 2.3 billion in euros in assistance since 1999. There's also an, what is called an annual country report, which assesses Kosovo's readiness to move closer to the European Union. Membership or not though, Kosovo is in Europe. Kosovars are Europeans. I'd like to call your attention to the following video as part of our branding campaign, and where I hope you will notice the pictures, the transforming perceptions of Kosovo, if you will. The logo has been desi designed to give a modern feel uh, to the audience, and the vivid colors are uh, have each, each have separate meaning. I hope you notice the green um, in the Young Europeans logo, uh, signifying the countryside, the blue Kosovo's flag, and the bricks, which um, signify uh, construction. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Don't rolling over the 
clouds bring the rain. It's time to start over. Time to join hands. The sun slowly rises and shines on earth. The sky opens. Kosovo, the young Europeans. So perhaps Audrey can take over. Thank you, Zana. And uh, we'll see if maybe we can get um, some assistance on that video. Maybe we can try to show it a little bit later. Since I, I don't know whether that was true on everyone else's feed, but mine, uh, mine froze up a little bit. But we'll see if we can work on that uh, during our question and answer period. Thank you so much, Zana and Florette, for, for your informative and, and really educational presentations. I know we all learned a lot here at the Dole Institute and our viewing audience really appreciated it. So I have a few questions that have been submitted from our audience here at the Dole Institute and also from our virtual, uh, our virtual audience. So I will go ahead and get started and I'll just pose them to, to both of you in general and you can kind of jump in and see how you'd like to respond, take turns responding as you like. Uh, my first question has to do with uh, his, historical uh, around the, the early 1990s. And the question is, did any democratic countries in Europe uh, join the US in their promotion of democracy uh, in Kosovo in the early 1990s? Who, who were the allies uh, of the US in supporting Kosovo at that time? Or were there any? Sure. Um, so in, in the European Union back then, uh, Germany and France, and of course the United Kingdom, Kingdom were among the strong supporters for um, human rights and freedoms in Kosovo and for ending the wars in the Balkans. So it was the major powers in Europe, as well as, uh, of course, led by the United States. And um, I, would, I would also need to maybe stress that we have received a lot of support by um, accepting our large number of uh, large number of displaced people and and uh, refugees from Kosovo to that that fled and left um, to Germany, uh, Switzerland, Austria, uh, United States, um, United Kingdom, um, and uh, France, mainly, uh, that lived there for uh, quite a long time. And uh, then, of course, returned after the war, some of them, um, but were strong supporters of, uh, of the freedoms and, and uh, our fight for uh, democracy back home. I don't know if that answers your question, Zana, if you, have, if you want to add something. Yes, but, but uh, I'd just like to add that the, um, the air campaign that we referred to in the presentation has been um, uh, done through NATO. So the United, the intervention of the United States in Kosovo uh, is actually done in a concerted effort with the international community, which is why we refer to the uh, mobilizing of the global force, if you will, and we refer to it. And, and uh, that also led, um, that has also drawn us closer to a number of countries that have also helped us after the independence as well. Thank you. Um, another question from here at the Dole Institute. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the new government of Kosovo is, is based on a constitution, your constitutional democracy. Do you have other 
documents, founding documents, similar to those that we have in the US uh, Bill of Rights or an amendment process, or how do those compare or are those still emerging? Um, no, we are, we are not legal experts, but as far as um, my experience uh, concerns, um, we have a constitution and we have a constitutional court that in case there is a misunderstanding or in case there is a need for clarification, uh, there are processes where um, political parties, the parliament or other institutions or citizens can, um, can um, submit a claim to the constitutional court and then the interpretations of the constitutional court uh, may become uh, some sort of legal acts that uh, may define how the constitution and the spirit of the constitution um, defines certain uh, rights or obligations. Thank you, Clarat. Um, another question, what are some of the next steps for Kosovo's integration into the European Union? I've spoken briefly about our path towards the European Union, but it relates to uh, good neighborly relations and reconciliation with Serbia. And I have mentioned briefly that we have engaged constructively in the dialogue, but we are, have yet to see that from our neighboring country, Serbia. Our path towards the European Union are um, pretty much depending on the, how we uh, treat each other and how we uh, move towards a European future together. So the dialogue with Serbia is very important and we hope that Serbia will engage constructively as well. You mentioned uh, minority groups in Kosovo. Um, are there, is there a Serbian com community in Kosovo and, and how does the Kosovo government uh, engage with minority groups in Kosovo? So if we just look at uh, the Kosovo flag, we see that there Did we just lose Anna, I think? I think we may. Okay, um, maybe I can take over briefly. Um, Please. I think what Zana wanted to say is that if we look at the Kosovo flag, we have um, uh, six stars above, uh, above the, the map of Kosovo on the flag, and they all represent the different communities uh, in Kosovo, meaning that Kosovo is the home of uh, all of its communities, including the Serb uh, community. And there are uh, constitutional guarantees in place that um, are set up to protect and to empower and to include them in the decision-making process uh, in, in Kosovo. So they are, well, but when it comes to the Serbian community uh, particularly, uh, the Serbian language is one of the two official languages in Kosovo. Um, the Serbs, are represented in the parliament and have a favorability quota when it comes to their representation in the, in the assembly of Kosovo. Um, back um, a few years ago, we went through a decentralization process where we established a number of um, Serb dominated uh, municipalities where they would uh, have their own local government uh, where they would have their government closer to their community, represented by their people, uh, and uh, with a budget, of course, financed similar to other municipalities by the central government and uh, the property taxes levied um, under, uh, inside the municipality. Um, so this is, in general, what my view is about the, the situation of uh, the Serb community uh, in Kosovo. Zana 
Welcome back. Sorry, I don't know what happened. I apologize. <laughs> I, you covered it really well, Piorat. I was just going to say that even the, the way we refer to our communities is not a majority minority anymore. It's such a modern constitution that it refers to all its communities as communities. And uh, we are very proud of that. We have had some interference with the Serbian community from the Serbian government, which we hope that uh, will not um, dis, uh, disrupt the integration process of the Serb community in the future. Uh, but Kosovo, as Teorat very well uh, said, we have put all the measures in place for a uh, reconciliation and integration of the, all communities of Kosovo within the country. May I just add, Audrey, when it comes to the Serbs, uh, but also when it comes to um, Albanians as well. Um, it is important that we normalize our relations with Serbia because this will not only benefit the Kosovo Albanian community and, and, and Kosovo in general, but especially the Serb uh, community in Kosovo because then um, we would have laid off the claims on the Kosovo territory by Serbia and uh, there will be a clear path uh, for us all together, uh, all communities, to work uh, towards a functioning democracy, uh, aspiring to become a member of the European Union uh, with uh, good neighborly relations and respect for human rights and uh, respect for all of the communities in Kosovo. So I believe, I strongly believe that if we were to progress uh, with normalizing our relationships uh, between our two countries, this would benefit also the Serb, uh, the Serb community greatly. And just to give a sense to the audience of how, uh, when we talk about communities in Kosovo, we'd like to also recall the fact that Kosovo is inhabited mostly over 90% by Albanians, uh, less than five, less than <laughs> around 2% by the Serbs and the rest of the communities. So where Kosovo is, <coughs> excuse me, is doing a lot in terms of its integration of its communities, we only hope to have a constructive partner on, on our path towards the European Union, where we see normalized relationship with Serbia and mutual recognition. Thank you both. Uh, another question from here at the Dole Institute. Um, you both mentioned growing up in a state of unrest or uncertainty and sometimes war. How did that situation affect your access to education in your home country or, and maybe inspire you to, to uh, travel abroad for your education? Could you talk about that, please? Thank you. I'll start. I, I hope no that you also share yours. <laughs> um, like I said, when uh, Senator Robert Dole visited Kosovo, I was seven. But I do remember um, having watched some uh, movies at the time and having learned a little bit of, of uh, English and at times translated the news for my family as we grew up into the war. I, we did not go to regular schools. We went to what we created as parallel school system where we went to school in different, um, my friend's houses and we all shared, um, we all, uh, the teacher would announce which, uh, which house we would go next, and we went in hiding. I remember how much we valued education at the time. And I realized at a very young age that the way we would get anywhere forward, anywhere where there's hope, is through education. So we channeled all the desperation, if you will, uh, reading and learning about different things. But also, in the back of my mind, um, I always remembered uh, various politicians and ambassadors that have issued so-and-so report and that have um, influenced the state of affairs by their um, standing up for the right thing or visiting in the most difficult of times. And it's in a way, it um, uh, helped me choose my career from a very young age where I would tell my family that I would want to become a politician or an ambassador and it sounded really funny because we didn't even have the hope to have a country at the time but I knew that if I ever wanted to have a, to leave a mark in this world I wanted to do something that others did for us 
namely the diplomats of countries that are allies to us today. So thank you for mentioning that we went to schools in Haidei and um, valued education so much, channeled or all that uh, we felt through books and writing. And so um, later when the country opened, it became a little bit easier to think of traveling outside of our countries. And I realized how much um, I admired the negotiation styles and the presentations of various people that visited Kosovo. And I thought that that's where I wanted to study. And that's how, uh, you know, when was in touch with different ambassadors and people like Jim Jema who have uh, not spared um, any of their time or energy to sponsor someone like me. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And thank you, Zana. And what are the odds of um, going to school in a parallel system in hiding and then being able to study in the US for us, it's, it's really a great honor. And for that, we are very thankful to uh, our sponsors, Jim Jema, um, the former ambassador to uh, Kosovo, John Menzies, uh, and the Kosovo American Education Fund, and many other supporters that um, maybe I failed to mention, but that, help, that, have, that have helped us and, and other students uh, of Kosovo to, um, to study in the US and try to develop uh, this country to what has become. Clarod, a question for you specifically as an entrepreneur. Can you talk a little bit about your experience as an entrepreneur in Kosovo and how uh, your country, uh, you know, being independent and a, and a free market, does that uh, contribute to your success as an entrepreneur or just talk about your experience with that? Sure. Uh, well, we have really favorable um, business conditions in, in, in Kosovo compared uh, to the region and, of course, overall uh, in the world. Um, one of the measures for uh, for a successful country of, of in attracting businesses and and um, having more investors is the uh, doing business uh, index of the, the World Bank. Uh, we rank pretty high, but um, being a small country has its its advantages and disadvantages. Um, it has a small market, of course, but we have the, the advantage of being close uh, geographically to the European Union. Uh, we can easily, well, easily, we can easily transport and go to the European Union, although uh, currently we have a, uh, a big obstacle uh, that we need a visa to go to the European Union, uh, all of us, uh, and we hope that this will be um, corrected by the European Union and that we will be granted uh, visa liberalization um, soon. Uh, it's among, perhaps, Zana, you, maybe you can correct me, but it's perhaps the one of the last uh, territories or countries in Europe that still needs uh, uh, still needs a visa to, to travel to the European Union. Um, as an entrepreneur, the business environment is, is uh, almost perfect. Uh, the tax system is very um, predictable. Taxes are very low compared to the region and uh, the European Union. Uh, we can easily export, um, easily produce. And as Anna mentioned earlier, we have a very good infrastructure when it comes to uh, roads, uh, utilities. Um, and uh, now we also have a stable energy electricity supply, uh, which is a, a great factor for, um, for having a successful business over here, be it in production or in services. Thank you. And uh, let's see, let's get to one more question here from the Dole Institute, and then uh, we'll see if we can, Zana, if you don't mind, we might try again with, with the Young Europeans uh, video afterwards. Yeah. It's so good. So, so let's do one more question, then let's try that again, see if we can get that to, to, to finish. Um, this question is from our audience here. In addition to human loss uh, during the time of, of wars during the, the 90s, um, were, was there destruction of uh, any loss or destruction of cultural monuments in Kosovo? Um, 
yes, there was destruction of cultural monuments. Um, during the war, we had uh, destruction of uh, both uh, mosques and churches uh, throughout Kosovo. And, um, and after the war, um, we have worked on the reparation of all of these, uh, all of these buildings um, and the protection of them uh, until today. Thank you. Uh, Mark, if you're ready, if you would try um, to play our last video one more time. Don't roll in over The clouds bring the rain It's time to start over Time to join hands The sun slowly rises Shining on earth, the sky open minded today. I feel the life that I want to come to me. Kosovo, the young Europeans. There we go. I think that's a wonderful note to end on. Thank you so much, Jenny and Florat and Zana for being with us today. We'll look forward to continuing this conversation another day. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, before we close, I wanted to be share uh, to share be sure to share a message. I was in, in contact with Senator Dole earlier this week, and he wanted to send a, a brief message to you all, and I'll, I'll read that here. He says, ad aspera per aspera, to the stars through difficulty. Many of us know that as this is the motto for the great state of Kansas. I think about this sometimes when I reflect upon the challenges I faced after World War II due to my injuries. Like many people, after the war, I was optimistic that the atrocities inflicted upon so many innocent people by the Nazi regime would not darken the planet again. Unfortunately, displacement and genocide by brutal dictators are still with us today, but there is hope. And if anyone doubts, they need only to look to the newest democracy in Europe, the Republic of Kosovo, a small but determined nation. When I visited in 1990, I saw hundreds of ethnic Albanians flooding the streets in spite of beatings and being hosed by Serbian police. They wanted freedom and were willing to not only fight for it, but to rebuild after a war and do the work to become a democracy with free and fair elections whose constitution enshrines the basic rights of all citizens. Ad aspera per aspera to the stars through difficulty. I'd like to give a special thanks to the team at the Dole Institute and to my dear friend, Jimmy Jama and all the others for putting this program together. And to all my friends in Kosovo who may be watching, I keep you in my heart always. Thanks again, Florat, Zana and Jenny for joining us today here virtually at the Dole Institute. Uh, we'll look forward to next time. Thank you all to our, our, virtual, our virtual audience out there in the world. Uh, we look forward to, to, to connecting with you again soon. So thanks so much for being with you, with us. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.